remember we, uh, part four got split up. We had A and then we had to kind of do A and then B because there was just too much to cover. If any of y'all didn't get 4A, there was a few in the back left over. Uh, but we're going to continue on um, with the rest of that particular part of um, 4. Uh, and this one starts, at, I mean, this one is categorized, God will give you strength, boldness, courage to walk with his anointing. And what we're going to do tonight, though, is we're basically going to cover a lot of scriptures and really talk them out. And what I really want to pull from this particular um, class tonight is to just get strength from the Word of God to encourage us, to uplift us, to know that His Word uh, has power and it can help us in our battles that uh, we face with the enemy and, and those things that come against us or things we need to... Our enemy can even be the things in our lives, the things in our heart that needs to be stripped out, stripped away, and we're, when we're attempting to do that. Um, so we'll start out, and, and like I said, a lot of the wording in here is in your handout. So all of the previous scripture verses are definitely, which I'm talking about the ones we did from the previous class, are definitely telling you that God can anoint you with his divine power, Whenever that power is going to be needed to take on any kind of heavy storm cloud. So if you have the head down to the last one, we covered some scriptures and some verses um, that were definitely um, valuable to you and I as a believer to know that God is going to anoint us with his divine power whenever we are facing a battle before us. However, there is one more thing that you are going to need before God will release his power through you. And that one more thing is the mental strength, courage, and boldness to step out with his power, to actually use it to directly engage with your enemy. What am I saying? I'm saying that God has given us all the tools that we need, whatever battle we're facing. But we have to pick up the tools. We have to utilize the tools. He gives us everything. But what's going to be is on our part is what tool are we going to pick up based on what we're facing? How are we going to utilize it? And will it, um, is that the right tool that we need for that particular battle that we're in? So we need to have the strength to say, Lord, I'm going to take your word. I'm going to take the weapons of warfare against this particular situation going on in your life. If you are not willing to step out and flow and operate with God's anointing for whatever you are going to need it for, then absolutely nothing is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that God's not going to step in. God can do anything, and he can step in, even sometimes in our shortcomings. God's mercy is bigger than that. But what I'm saying is that you and I have a part to play in, in warfare. We have a part to play, and that is that you and I have to be proactive. We have to take a stand, as the scripture says, having done all to stand, stand. stand. So the next uh, bullet I have here, it says, if you are not willing to speak out God's word to any demons who may be trying to attack you, then God's power will not come into that situation to blow them out of there. And they will thus stay right where they are at continuing to attack and torment you. What, why is that? Because the one thing that they cannot stand is what? Truth. They can't stand truth. And God's word is true. So if Satan is a liar and the father of lies, then what's the opposite of that? Truth. So what's the best way to fight Satan's demonic forces is with truth. And truth is what? His word. word. Word of God. Truth. So they cannot stand up against truth. They can't. So whenever we declare God's word, we declare the promises of God's word, then they're not going to stand there and continually torment you because the word of God also says that demons tremble. How? At the mention of his name. They tremble. If they tremble just at the mention of the name of Jesus, can you imagine when you were quoting Jesus? And what do I mean by that? Because Jesus is what? The Word. 
So if you are calling out the name of Jesus, if you're quoting Jesus, which is the word, they're not going to stand there. They're going to be trembling, and they're going to want to get out of there. Um, so it's important that we have to be proactive. All right, so now I'm going to talk about some verses, and I want us to be very interactive and tell me what is it you feel the Lord is speaking to you about these particular verses. Now, so many of us, Philippians 4.13, we've quoted, many of us know it by heart, but what does it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, tell me what that is saying to you. What is the Lord, <coughs> Jesus, who is the Word, what is Jesus saying to you and I in that first verse? Think about it in terms of warfare. What is he telling you? Judge or anything like that, 
can put butterflies in your stomach. Okay? But if the Lord is there to strengthen you and he's there to even give you that boldness deep within your soul, you're like, man, Lord, we got this. Because what? You are the righteous judge. You're the ultimate judge. So I'm going to just trust in you and I cry out to you for strength. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, like what, what just ahead. came to me? Mm -hmm. It says, hold on a second, I got to trust in uh, In the day when I cried out, I cried out, but you know what I did? Stuck around with the answer. Yeah. And his answer made me bold. Yeah. Too many times we don't hang around. All people cry. Yeah. And cry some more. I've been there. Yeah. yeah, and you're right. It doesn't go into detail how he answered him, but obviously he answered him with something that encouraged him to give him the boldness to be able to stand up against what was going on. Very good observation. All right, Psalm 68:35. Oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. You know, I mean, I love the fact that he just says, you are more awesome than even your holy places. We all know, those of us too that have been to Jerusalem can honestly say, man, that's a holy city. And it just emanates holiness in that city. It just does. And, and so he's saying, you're even more awesome than that. You, is, you are the one who gives us strength and power to your people. Well, that even includes you. I wear his people. We were grafted in, obviously. Um, so he gives us strength and power as well. All right, look at the next one, Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. I think that really kind of says a lot about all of us, strength at one time or another. But what does it say here? He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. What does that say? In our weakness, he makes us strong. Yes. He carries us through our sicknesses. He does because he, he sustains our spirit. He restores my soul with brethren, and I pray that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Yeah. If I go to bed with my word playing at me and I'm hearing the word, when I when I wake up, my soul is prospered in the night, and my body restores me in the morning. I wake up like in fullness of joy. But when I hit the ground, when I get, uh, when I hit the floor, it's like I'm really the older I get, the more I'm realizing, Lord, you're restoring my body, you're restoring my soul. So it's, you know, I went to bed and I didn't because I did a little bit too much. But when I came up out of that place of going into the restoring of my soul. I came up strong again. Hallelujah. My hands will fly up and I just all of a sudden say, I love, I love my home. I love my life. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You know. And, so, and you made a very, very good, strong point. You know, that scripture that says, you know, he desires that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And you're right. You know, no wonder he says walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because as your spirit is, is strengthened and as it, it prospers, then your physical body is going to reap the benefits of that. But if we're in turmoil spiritually within ourselves, does our body not reflect it? Do we not start feeling it in our physical body when our, when our inside is in turmoil? then we begin to, you know, have some physical issues going on. 
Um, so that's a very good point to that particular. Anybody else for me? Well, if you look at the first part of it there, before we even ask for anything, it said you are more awesome than your holy places. Praise mm -hmm. goes up first. Yes. Yep. Praying first, I acknowledged his greatness. Then uh, he declared he gives strength and power to his people. Yep. You know, I want to say this before giving God the thanks. In Psalm 28, 7, where it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. Mm -hmm. That verse ends in, Because I trust in you, I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. And you hear that so much, especially from our generation. We're just so thankful mm -hmm. for God, what He's done for us and our children and our grandchildren and our friends, the sick, and everybody we lift up to the Lord in faith. We're, we're thankful that we're able to even do that. That's right. That's right. You know, I mean, that brings up a good point. I mean, y'all know we send out the prayer requests and we text them out. And and uh, why do we do that? Number one, because we want, you know, we want to be a praying church and a church that intercedes. But to be a part of it, like what you said, but even to be a little part of someone receiving healing or encouragement or financial blessings or whatever the prayer may be about healing um, to play a little part of that is a blessing you know it's a blessing to be able to help somebody uh, so alright let's look at this one's Robert 326 for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being taken Okay, why is that important to me? It has significance to me. And the reason is, is he's sitting on that back table. When the surgeon said, I'm going to take your son's foot, after they already took his arm, which was done before I could fly out to San Antonio, they had already taken his arm. And then they told me, we're going to take his foot. And I said, why? And he said, because it was just dangling by a tendon. And they said, because it would be easier for him to recover quicker if we do that. Because if we leave the foot, then he's going to maybe have a year of rehab, you know, rehab and, you know, all of that. Therapy, all of that. I go, well, he's 27 years old. He's strong enough to handle that. I said, no, you already took his arm. Don't take his foot. Because at least then he can walk. And so when I cried out to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm crying out to you like that one said where you cried out to me. I cried out to the Lord on behalf of Brad. And I said, Lord, no. Do not let them take his foot, Lord. Do not let them. And then he took me straight. Never saw it before until he took me to Proverbs 3.26. And it says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being taken. That's the verse the Lord gave me as a mother to hold on to. And they guess what? He has his foot. <laughs> yes, he had to go through a lot of therapy. Yes, he had to go through a lot of surgeries. But he's walking. But the Lord gave me that promise. That was to me warfare going on. For my son's life, he, he was in a coma, and, and I was crying out to him. And he gave me that, and I thought, wow, of all the verses, one that actually is about what I was crying out to the boy. All right, Proverbs Job 17, 9. Yet the righteous will hold to his way, and he who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger. Now, what is that saying? Is that saying uh, there's a requirement from us, isn't it? What would that requirement be? Because if we are walking 
walking in His righteousness, if we are attempting to walk in His holiness, and if we are attempting to do what His Word says we should do, how we live, you know, He said, He who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger. Well, what's He saying? As you and I are walking and attempting to live a clean life with the Lord, we are going to be stronger and stronger, are we not? Okay, Hosea 11.10. They shall walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, then his sons shall come trembling from the west. Now, this is a prophetic statement from the prophet Hosea, but what is he actually declaring? I don't know the 
God will run protection for you so that no attacks will ever come your way in the first place. God will act as a shield and fortress for you. You know, sometimes we, we, we get into situations, and it might be a battle that's before us, that maybe God opened the door a little bit for you to walk through. Doesn't mean he's, his eyes are on you, but maybe he wants you to be victorious in this battle life to strengthen you. To strengthen you. To let you know he is with you. To, to show himself strong to you. Because how are you going to ever know how good God is, how great God is, how big God is, unless you've ever seen him in operation? You know, sometimes, you know, we may be saying, Satan, I rebuke you, and the whole time it might be God saying, I want to show you something about me through this situation. That's where wisdom comes in. And I, sometimes I may not know if I'm in the middle of something or a battle or a trial or whatever. I just say, Lord, let me learn something. As I'm going through this, Lord, let me learn something from it. How I can grow in knowledge of you. How you can show yourself strong to me through this situation. You know, because I want to make sure, Lord, if I'm going through this and not knowing if it is the enemy attacking me or maybe God is wanting to show me something, I, either way, I'm like, Lord, even if it is the enemy attacking me, Lord, how can I learn and grow from this situation that I'm going and I'm facing? How can I know you more? Because I know, Lord, you're going to show yourself strong and the, and the victory is going to come because the victory already came on the cross. So I know a victory is going to come. But what can I learn from this? To see the enemy's tactics and manipulations and strategies so that the next time... When I see this coming, I know where it's coming from and how I can defeat it or how I can be proactive. Stay right there for a second. Okay. I want to expand on that where you say, give an example <clears throat> where you say, however, time, there will be time where you will have to do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a good example. About 21 years ago, Chris had a stroke. She was in the hospital. She couldn't do nothing. Couldn't even pray for herself. Couldn't do nothing. She just was existing. As you know, our hearts is in missions. There were two missionaries okay. who came there and said, God sent us here. And they told you to tell us, tell me, tell Chris that we got this. We've got you covered with prayer. There's some time where you can't even pray for yourself. And you've got to have the body of Christ to be able to pay for, uh, to pray for you. And that stuck out more than anything. However, time you will have to do absolutely nothing because God will go before you. And he had prepared the way for it. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it was it. Did she have immediate healing in her body? No manifestation, according to my eyes. She was released from the hospital. She still couldn't do nothing. Till one day. Till one day. <laughs> She went to church on Sunday, and you know she had a cane and everything, and just stood up and started praying to God. And then the man behind her, beside her, I can't remember where it was. I think he was beside her. He laid her hands on her and said, be healed yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. She was healed immediately. <laughs> she went out of that church with no cane, no speech impediments, no paralysis.
paralysis on one side. So that will happen immediately with Janet. Yes. Wow. We see it. Yes. 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 And Father, I stand right now in yes. faith for Janet. Yes. 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 Father, I say that you will Jesus. restore every cell in her body, line it up according yes. to the way you created her. Yes. I stand in faith right now with her right. mother. Father, that by your son's stripes she is healed. And Father God, we know that you are the God that healeth thee. And we stand in faith. You're no respecter of person. Yes. And Father, we believe now. Yes. We believe now that Janet is healed. Yes. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Yes. She's healed, Father. We believe and we receive your word in faith, believing that Janet is totally restored right now. Mind, soul, and body in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's the Lord. So God will be what? Your hedge, your stronghold, your refuge, your strength, your fortress, your rock, your deliverer, your savior, your defense, your light, your front and rear guard. He will be that for you if you let him. If you let him. He will be your stronghold. He will be your hedge. And even if sometimes, like in that case, I mean, I, I had three many strokes in my life. Doesn't mean he's not my hedge. He was still my hedge. He still was. But I came out of that stronger than I was before. Why? Because what the enemy meant for bad, God turned it around for good. And because he I mean, I could stand here when I couldn't even use my arm and use my leg and he had to even bathe me because I couldn't do it. God was still my strength. He was still my refuge. He was still my hedge. And I knew that. And I remember this couple came and said, I don't understand this. You and you and Keith are y'all are doing y'all are leadership at the church and y'all are so involved in this and that. Why why did this happen to you? I go, let me tell you something. Don't you ever talk about my Father, don't talk against my other father. My steps are ordered by the Lord. And if I am to walk through this for whatever reason, and I believe with all my heart, a lot had to do with the nurses and the doctors there too. But whatever reason, I said, I know he's, he's my refuge, he's my defense, he's my high tower, he's my stronghold, he's, he's my rock. And he will get me through it. And he did. And he'll, you know, and I know all of y'all have testimonies where he's got you through something that seemed impossible. But I tell you what, don't anybody ever talk about my Abba Father. You know, when I hear people say, well, God, you know, why did God take your, you know, husband or wife or child or what? Mm. Things happen in life, unfortunately. But he, he loves us. And he's our refuge and he's our fortress. And when those things happen, what do we do? We run fast to the tower. We run fast to the, him as our refuge. We run fast and hold on to that rock when we feel like the ground is shaking underneath us. We hold on tight. He's the one we run to. He's our front and our rear guard. Yes, unfortunate things happen in, in lives, but he's not dismissed as our protector and our, and our hedge and our refuge. Um, these verses here have the full power and anointing of God Almighty himself on them. Look what Job 1.10 says. And this was Satan talking about Job to God. He said, have you not made a hedge around him, around him? household and around all that he has on every side, Satan saw that in Job's life. You don't think he sees 
out in your life? 2 Samuel 22, 2-3 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, the God of my strength. In Him I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You saved me from violence. Wow. It's kind of like what Daryl said earlier. I mean, he's praising him. You're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my strength. Oh, my goodness. My shield. My stronghold. My refuge. My Savior. Psalm 62, 1 through 2 says, Truly my soul silently waits for God. From Him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. You notice he said, truly my soul silently waits for God. Sometimes let's quietly wait for Him. We need to still and we wait silently. For him. Amen. Alright. Here's the verse here. 2 Thessalonians 3 3. <coughs> but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. What is the Lord saying to you in this verse? What are you hearing him say in that verse? you. A promise of protection. Amen. A promise of protection. Why? He's faithful. He will establish you, but it also says he will guard you. Or right, look at Psalms 34, 19 through 20. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You know, we can stop right there and what does the Lord tell us? That doesn't mean that we're not going to have affliction as righteous people, right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them sometimes. No. How? All. He guards all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. You know, this was the prophetic word that was spoken about Jesus that said not one of his bones would be broken. And when he was on the cross, guess what? Not one of his bones were broken. Because remember, they went and broke the, the legs of the two beside him to help hurry up their death. Because then they would really fall from the nails and they, would, they couldn't breathe. But when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. And they didn't break his bones because it was prophesied that his bones would not be broken. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Even what Jesus went through was many afflictions, but God delivered him out of it, didn't he? Why? Because Jesus declared while he was ministering, I will die. Three days, I will what? Arise. His words were already out there. And they came to pass. 2 Timothy 4.18 And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. What's the promise there? Is he going to only help us through certain ones? No. Once again, it reiterates, from every evil work, God can deliver you and me and preserve us for his heavenly kingdom. His heavenly kingdom. You know, just the testimony that Pastor Keith gave. I feel like he delivered me from evil work because... A stroke to me is evil work. And preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. 
Why? Because I can prophesy, I can declare, I can testify that it was his kingdom work that brought back life to my body. Okay? Preserve me for his kingdom, heavenly kingdom, for his glory. Right. The Lord, Psalms 18, 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. You notice how many times in these verses have we heard that? Our rock, our deliverer, our fortress. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. That's a promise. And you can even quote that to the Lord Almighty. When you're going through something, you're worthy to be praised, and you will save me from my enemies. From my enemies, Lord. Why? Because you're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my strength. You're my shield. You're the horn of my salvation. You're my stronghold. That's why, Lord. Psalms 37, 39, and 40 says, But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Now, is this a verse that someone who doesn't know the Lord and wants to accept the Lord, is that not for them too? Yeah. He's going to deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? Because they trust in him to say, Lord, I acknowledge you as my Savior. I acknowledge you as my Lord. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. Why? Because salvation comes from him. All right. Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Boy, that's almost self, definitely self-sustaining right there. Psalms 46, verses 1 and verse 5. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Well, you know, if we think about that, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the sea, well, we all know if we saw a mountain, being thrown into the sea, that's a big thing. That's a powerful thing. Even if that happens, the Lord says, don't fear, because what? He's our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So it doesn't matter whether something going on in your life seems impossible, seems big, and seems really, you know, like intense, it doesn't matter. Because that's basically what he's saying. That it's beyond your even capability. Because we would never think of a mountain being thrown into the sea. That's a big thing. But if we're going through something that in our lives and we feel like it's so big that, Lord, how is this going to ever, how are we going to ever get out of this? Or how is this going to ever be resolved? And it's like one thing after another after another. But to God... It's just a mountain that's going to be thrown into the sea. He's just saying, don't fear, because he's your strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 56, verse 3 and 11 says, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? You notice how he's repeating that. It's like he's saying, okay, if I keep saying it, I'm going to get it. You know? 
Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. And there are mountains that surround Jerusalem. They are, and they've been there for thousands of years. Psalm 66, 8. Oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, who keeps your soul among the living and does not allow your feet to be moved. Okay, if we feel like we're on shaky ground and there's something really intense going on in our life, your feet are not going to be moved. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. He's got you on solid ground, spiritually, more than anything. And Isaiah 46, 4, Even to your old age, I am He. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. So for those of us that are gray hair, <laughs> you still got some. We have to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> we all have some on the sides at least, right? Oh, he got <laughs> He said, I will carry you, I'll deliver you, even in your old age. All right, God will go before you fight your battles. Okay, it's here. Sometimes God will simply run a protective shield around you where nothing will be able to get through to attack you. Other times, something will start to slip through to come directly against you, and then God will move ahead of you to take it out. This is where God will literally take your enemy head on and do battle with it. In other words, sometimes you notice you go through a battle and it kind of it, it's resolved quickly. The victory comes quickly. And then there's other times you're like, okay, well, any day now, let the victory come. But he's there with you. Okay, sometimes God will fight the actual battle through you. Other times he will simply tell you to hold your position and do absolutely nothing. And then he will move himself to completely take out the attack coming against you. This is where God shows you how powerful and how awesome he really is when he moves into battle to personally protect you. There was nothing that I personally could do when that when those strokes came on me, but he could and he did. That was one where I could do nothing. But he could and he did. All right. But you had that Aaron beside you. Moses had Aaron, you had Keith. <laughs> and he helped you to get ready and get in that car and get there. Amen. All right, these are two major powerful verses telling us that God can be a man of war if he needs to be. Exodus 15, verse 3 and 6 says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath, which consumed them like stubble. Well, that tells you right there, man, that gets me all pumped up to know that my Lord is going to be there when the battle comes. He's a man of war. And when Satan comes and attacks his sons and daughters, he's that man of war. And in Psalms it talks about he will run and leap over mountains and hills to come to your rescue. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. He's there for you. Amen. The battling angels. Um, sometimes God will take up the battle for you and take your enemy head on all by himself. Other times he will use his battle angels. Several people I know have had seen visions of, of these battle angels. All of them have said they have actually seen swords by their sides. I've actually seen swords of angels. When God opened my eyes in the spirit realm and they had the swords, it was like fire blazing coming out of the very, you know, the, what we would call that steel part or whatever. There was like fire on those blazing swords. Powerful. All right. Scriptures, uh, this is talking about the angels. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways.
minister for those who will inherit salvation. If you are saved, then God will send his ministering spirits, which are angels, to minister to you. First Chronicles 21 says, Then the Lord commanded the angel, and he returned his sword to its sheath. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. And just like God, when he pushed Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, what did he do? He had two angels standing guard with what? Swords drawn to keep Adam and Eve from going back in. All right. 2 Kings 19.35 And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, there, there were the corpses all dead. God used his angels to destroy the enemies of Israel. Acts 12.23 Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him. Because he did not give glory to God, and he was eaten by worms and died. Ouch. All right, I end it with this. This is the most powerful visual, because I'm a visual. Only the Word of God can do this. And if you think, see that as the Word of God, hugging you, holding you, surrounding you. Giving you that encouragement, giving you that love, giving you that strength. To me, that speaks volumes. Um, I'm going to jump way back. Uh huh. And I, you don't need to go there. Okay. And I think uh, we miss some truth in the time of this year. Okay. So the God before us, or the God before you, who can be against you? Yes. That's the question. Who can be against you? You. You can be against yourself by the words that you speak. If we speak over ourselves in affliction, yes. then we're speaking against ourselves. Yes. Instead of speaking about the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Anybody see anything in this that ministers to them? I mean, visualize that and remember that. His word. Can make us feel peaceful and safe and secure. Amen. Did y'all enjoy that? Yes. That was good. I want to give you a visual. I heard talking about the battle angels. This is a testimony down on Honduras. We went there year after year for many years. Many times we were down there, and there was definitely a battle with a lot of gangs down there. And there was one place we went to. We were there every day going through. In fact, the government had the troops there to guard us. And the last day, all these people started coming in, these gang members and all that. And we got our translator to ask, ask them, why didn't they come in? For today. And they said they couldn't because there were two large people at the door <laughs> with, with flaming swords and would not let us come in. And I don't know, wow, that's <laughs> oh, and, and the last day, those two angels, as it turned out, were there and they just took them on in. <laughs>